How's everybody doing? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we started. On a uh, cool day <coughs> back in January 2014, I was driving down the street and I uh, <coughs> seen an elderly homeless gentleman. He was about 70 years old and he was hunched over a cart and he had no hat, he had no mittens, and he was just wearing a pair of sneakers. And I remember how cold it was that day because before I left my house, my hand had frozen to the screen door, the metal on my door. And as I looked at him, I thought to myself, I should really help this man. And I didn't. I drove past him, and I didn't know what to do. It was about a week later, I kept thinking about this man, and I was fooling around on Facebook, and I had seen that one of my friends had posted what they were having for supper. And then that's when it hit me that we use social media to post what we're having for supper, but we don't use it to realize that there are people in our own communities that are going without supper. So at the time I was laid off, and I knew that I could not afford to help all these people. But I also knew that with my friends, my family, and with having the power of social media at my fingertips, that I could not afford to do. I couldn't afford to not help all these people. So I reached out to my friends and family, and I asked them. They had any <coughs> book bags, hats, mittens, peanut butter, canned goods that we could go give out to the homeless. And in two weeks, with the help of a community and five businesses working as drop-off locations, we were able to make 33 of these bags, minus the cat. Yeah. <laughs> We, uh, she wanted to be in the picture. So, me and a group of friends, we went out all day and all night. We searched under the bridges, we searched in the parks, we searched in the banks, and we handed out these bags. Now, one night while I was out, I went into a bank, and there was a homeless gentleman sleeping on the floor. And after I gave him a bag, he looked at me and he said, thank you and thank everyone for giving me this stuff, but I want you to know that this has not always been my life, and that I will get back on my feet again. When I walked out the doors of that bank, I knew that not all homeless people were drug addicts or alcoholics, and that some of them were people just like me, that without the proper support, they just fall through the cracks of society. And it was in that moment that I realized that the power for change is within all of us. And it doesn't take a lot to create change. It only takes a little bit from each of us. So I started thinking about how I could help my community and what else I could do. And our group noticed that a lot of seniors have to make the horrible decision of deciding between their food or their medicine. So the members of our group, we asked if they would turn in the recyclable bottles that they would otherwise throw out. And in one month, we received over 11,000 recyclables. It came to a total of $641. That's when reality set in that it was going to take a lot of recyclables <laughs> to buy any food. So I started thinking about <clears throat> what would be the best way to buy food, for the least amount of money. And then that's when couponing popped into my head. Now, have any of you guys ever seen that show on TV, Extreme Coupon? Yes. Yeah? Perfect. Because that was the extent of my knowledge when it came to couponing. The only thing I knew about it was a bunch of crazy women hoarding toothpaste in Dior. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, the only coupon I ever used was one I would use at like a drive-thru. I had no idea about it. But I reached out to a group called the Moncton Coupon Ladies. And these ladies ended up being some of the most kind, caring, generous, and amazing people that I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. And in one month, with using couponing, we were able to feed 33 families for $747. Now, 
my views changed on homelessness, my views changed on couponing. I had realized that the power for change was within all of us. But I also see that it, it's not that people do not want to help, it's just that sometimes people don't know how to help. So what we did is around, around this time, I kept thinking to myself, like, I never used to donate. And I never donated because of my mistrust in other organizations. I would always question where the money was going. I would question why some of these people running these organizations are making huge amounts of money while they're in the business of helping people. Or why I didn't see any real change in my community. It takes money to do things, and that is a fact. But it is not money that fixes problems. It's people taking action. I looked at registering as a nonprofit, and when I did, I see that there was a government regulation that stated a minimum that I had to give back. But that also told me that if I wanted to exploit this fact, I could take the maximum. And I kept thinking to myself, there's got to be a better way of doing this than doing the same thing over and over and over again and always expecting different results. Now, when I finally did register, it wasn't long until I realized that nonprofits and charities are one of the hardest organizations to start. I'm not asking you to come into my store and buy something that you already believe in. I'm not asking you to buy something you already enjoy. I'm asking for your trust. And trust is not an easy thing to ask for in today's world. So, I founded the Humanity Project with the goal of being 100% transparent while putting 100% of the donations back into our community. Around Christmas time, we did a project called Project Secret Santa. We collected toys for children. One night while I was out giving out these toys, I walked into a bag and this man was on the floor. Now, I looked at him and I asked him, if you could have anything for Christmas, what would you want? And he said, I'd like to go home and see my family. I said, how long has it been since you've seen your family? And he said, three years. Now, you can call it fate, call it destiny, but the day before I walked into that bank, someone offered me a bus ticket that was good anywhere. So I told him, get up off the floor, I'm going to take you with me, and I took him to a hotel. I gave him brand new clothes that were supplied by one of our great, generous sponsors. Gave him food. I gave him gifts for his family, and we put him on a bus and we sent him home. Now, in the two weeks while he was gone, I kept thinking to myself, this man just needs a helping hand out. And if I could help him find a job, help him find a place, then it would be a lot easier for him to get up off his feet than for him to do it by himself with no support. Around two weeks later when he got back, I met up with him and I had a job interview lined up for him. I took him to this job interview and after the interview we went out for lunch. While we were having lunch, he looked at me and he said, did you know we met before? And I said, really? When did we ever meet? He said, last year in a bank. I looked at him and I said, was it this bank? He said, yeah. I said, did you say to me, thank you and everybody for giving me this stuff, and I want you to know this hasn't always been my life, and that I will get back on my feet again? And he looked at me and he said, you got a good memory. <laughs> so I started to cry because this man changed my views. And he made me realize that the power for change is within all of us. And I thanked him because not only did he help me, and he helped all the people that we have helped, and he is responsible for me taking it to the next step because he changed the way I felt. About two days later, we had him in an apartment that was fully furnished from our members, our community members. And he still resides there today. 
he's still very grateful and he's still loving his new place. Now, when I was out helping the homeless throughout the city, I walked into a church. I went into a mosque, and they both helped the homeless. But the two groups don't really work together. I couldn't wrap my head around this. Because I kept thinking to myself, I don't go to work every day with somebody that I might not even like. But at the end of the day, the job gets done. It doesn't get done because we have the same values or we have the same beliefs. It gets done because that's the job at hand. Not everyone has money to donate. Some people have time. Some people have services. But everybody has something. With the power of the internet, and the power of people, we can truly change anything. We know that in today's world, there are good people and there are bad people everywhere. It does not matter whether you're a police officer, an outlaw biker, or a priest. We no longer need to judge groups of people from the actions of a few, and instead we need to accept people as individuals. I've heard people say that the generation before us failed. I do not believe the generation before us failed. I think they did the best they could with the tools they have. And today we have a tool unlike any other. The internet is a tool to unite like-minded people for the same purpose, faster and easier than at any time before us. There are some of the most kind, caring, beautiful, most brilliant people out there. And we just, we don't really need to reinvent the wheel. We just all need to learn how to use it properly. In the Humanity Project's first year, with $4,914, we helped two homeless people get off the street, we fed 141 families, we started a community garden, we gave out 87 winter survival bags to the homeless sleeping on our streets, we sponsored and got toys for 17 families at Christmas time, we donated two truckloads of toys to another organization called What Kids Need Moncton. We distributed 45 garbage bags and boxes of miscellaneous items to other organizations in our city. We shared awareness of what we were doing at the Hub City Tattoo Festival and the Atlantic Nationals. We gave away a TV, barbecue, gift cards. We bought children at one of our local schools, movie and theme park passes. <coughs> we gave away over 230 free coffee and donuts just as a random act of kindness. And we continue to this day to still donate clothes and furniture and other necessities to other organizations in our community. How did we do it? We did it by working together regardless of our race, our religion, our social standing, by trying new ideas, by thinking outside the box. I do not have all the answers. No one person does. But by working together, we can find better answers to some of today's issues that are going on in society so that we can better this world as a whole. I did not come here today to ask any of you to join or to donate to the Humanity Project. I came here today to ask you all not to be uneducated like I was and not to use your lack of information to not donate or not help out in your community, but instead be proactive and educate yourselves on the issues that concern you and the things that you're passionate about. Work with like-minded people. Ask where your money goes. 
And if you're not happy with where your money goes, then donate it to somewhere you believe it should be going. And in return, a greater change will happen in this world. Margaret Mead once said, never believe that a few caring people cannot change the world, for indeed that's all who ever have. And our group is proof of that, because we're changing the world in our own backyard for the benefit of one person at a time, every day. If you think back in time, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, it wasn't only a different time we lived in. It was a completely different world. Think ahead in time, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It won't just be a different time, it will be a completely different world that we live in. And the decisions that you all make today affects what happens tomorrow. And you have to ask yourself, what kind of world do you want it to be? I am just a human being that shares this beautiful planet with each and every one of you. And I hope that you all join on a revolution towards a more kind, caring, and compassionate human evolution. So that in the future, you can not only say that you were there when the world changed, you can say that you were part of it. Because the power for change is truly within all of you. Thank you.